The Spirituality Now podcast is sponsored by Delaflor Teachings International, a spiritual and systemic coaching and consulting company with the mission to help individuals, businesses, and corporations create brilliant futures through sustainable transformation. Also sponsored by the Network for Human Empowerment, a philanthropic TV network that serves Spanish-speaking communities with free, conscious education aimed to empower individuals to become the best versions of themselves. And our podcast producer, Ascend Media, Authority Syndication, delivering premium video marketing, podcast production, and social syndication. the Spirituality Now podcast, a podcast committed to supporting you in your journey to life mastery and personal enlightenment. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor, a host that this morning, you know, my kids, my younger kid thought I was channeling Tony Robbins because I tend to, to have a a very excited, passionate voice, you know, um, and um, and that's that's what I woke up with today. Stop channeling Tony Robbins. I'm like, no, no, Tony Robbins is already busy. This is your mom. Anyways, I'm checking in with that. I am super excited today because we're starting a journey uh, with a guest that she's come before with us. I consider her, before more than reading her bio and anything, I consider her an expert in maturity. And, and I know nowadays everybody calls themselves an expert, which has a right to exist, a specialist in something. But this woman truly, genuinely, really is kind of a specialist in this, a specialist, an expert in maturity. Her life is an evidence of this, her family, the way she serves the world, the way she supports people, set healthy boundaries. Well, she'll talk about that a little more. But what I want to share with you is that we're doing uh, something new in the podcast because she's going to be coming back uh, for a couple of more episodes. So we're starting a journey with her. You've heard her before. Actually, I have a list. You're going to hear paper because I have uh, a bunch of questions that I received from people in Latin America after hearing her um, that are really juicy, actually. I chose the most raw that usually podcasters wouldn't choose. I got to go there because Shanti has the maturity and, and is Shanti Zimmerman, by the way, proper introduction. Uh, she's uh, coming back to the podcast to share with us uh, all the wisdom that uh, is necessary, I believe, in the world right now and uh, necessary for each of us as individuals to to really navigate what is to be human, what real life is about, what reality is uh, on life. So I'll just share with you um, a quote of something that Shanti says. By the way, we will link, uh, I make sure I'll tell my team, we will link um, her previous podcast so you understand where we're coming from and where we're going towards with this so you can learn more about Shanti but we'll put um her Facebook any 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 link that you may need and and also the previous podcast link we will add it in in the in the in the content in the copy content I think that's how you call it but Shanti shares I care deeply about the maturing of humanity and a world that works for everyone Shanti is committed to teaching people right relationship with themselves others and the planet to be responders to the exact times we live in is we live in is deeply needed and I'm here Shanti's here to see that that this is getting done that this is done so my friend Shanti welcome back I feel this our podcast together you know it's I, I suddenly I don't feel like spirituality now podcast I am your host Yvonne Del Flor I am your co-host with Shanti Zimmerman today oh thank you and I just want to, I want to say hello to everyone listening, that I know you're out there and I'm glad you're out there mm. <laughs> and that you matter as much to what we are speaking about as, as much as we do. Yes. So Shanti, before I go into this very juicy questions, 
you know, we're going to start this journey in the, in the podcast. So, so people don't get only to listen a podcast, but get to, you know, a, a transmission, they get a benefit from it. You know, it's kind of like, I recommend everybody to write things down, sit with what resonates with you, practice it. Uh, because, you know, um, embodiment is huge in the, in, in the teachings of Shanti, of you embodying. And I'm, I'm going to let her explain that, but I want, I want to, um, to briefly, if you can share with us, how did you, uh, when was the moment and how, how did you choose? Hey, I gotta, I gotta bring these teachings, right? I gotta share with people, uh, about maturity. How did that happen? What was the realization? When did that begin? <laughs> how long do we have? Um, <laughs> know, that's why we're making several episodes, but I, just a brief, just touching briefly, you know, because I, I want people to also learn a little bit more about your background. Mm. I always, uh, I often like to say that everything that I give is something I would have needed myself at some point in my life and did not have. Right. So I, um, when I was little, I remember thinking, where are all the real adults? Because I didn't see any really. I saw, and I didn't even know what that meant really as a kid, but I felt like something was not right. And then it was, where are all the women? As I got older, I was looking for this. I was looking somewhere to try to find what I lived inside, but couldn't find outside. And then it became, where are the elders? So my response to my own life, what was missing in my own life is what I bring to the work that I do. The response to those questions. Mm. And what's really, really alive for me right now is a mature humanity would never harm its children. Mm. Wow. (sighs) Yes. And and we're seeing a lot of that right now. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Of the opposite. Well, generations of it. It's a, we're talking about generations and generations of children are the most silenced, oppressed voices. And then that turns into, you know, upset, abused, violent adults. Yes. Wow. I'm making notes because this is so powerful. You know, I heard one of our guests uh, in the podcast, Annabelle Biscara. Um, she was, um, she's very much into the work of women only, but she asked me, you know, one day I said, you know, I'm growing up right now as an elder and I want to introduce you some of my elder friends. And she said, I'm always wondering where are the elders? So she had, you are, um, the second person I heard that, you know, that, that is like that wondering that where are my elders? Where are my role models? And yeah, I couldn't find ancestors worth descending from. Oh, Wow. Okay, that is so potent. Yeah. Share a little bit more about this because, you know, I think even that humanity needs re-education about like the ancestors and and please just share a little bit more about that. If, if I have anything for the reason of my life is to be a, an ancestor worth descending from and not like to give me any props or like, oh, I left a legacy, um, but to actually make the world better for the ones that come after me, to actually give them a sense of life is worth living and it's worth living because you're cared for and it's worth living because p- other people care and it's worth living because somebody loved me through it long before I ever existed. Somebody thought about my existence mm. and lived as if I mattered Mm. Wow. Live as if you mattered. And, you know, I want to like yellow highlight this in this moment, you know, like highlight this because, you know, recent last week, I, I know a couple that knows a couple, right? (laughs) And this couple, they just lost their son to suicide, 12 years old, precious (laughs) angel, beautiful family. But he, you know, he, I don't, I don't know what really went on in his mind or what really went on around, but uh, the bullying he was living on, you know, internet, social media, all of that. 
you know, I, I, I do not know. And people, you know, of his family were saying, what will have made a 12 year old that is loved, that has a family going to a place where he felt that he didn't matter anymore. So what you're sharing right now, you know, it touches me because I will love every single human on earth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when they are born, especially, and the mother supported and the father supported, obviously starts, it's just it's such a generational thing, mm -hmm. but to, to actually know that they matter. And so share with us a little bit more about that, because I think this is such, oh my, my, I need you for so many podcasts, right? But this, people have forgotten. And in the forgetfulness, you know, sometimes we, um, we carry this identity that is false, that, um, that we have to be feeding something we are not and we begin to feel more empty. I'm not sure if you get me, you know, but yeah. it's, is that there's an emptiness because we don't know this very crucial fact that we matter in the world. Right. And when we're 12, uh, we're in the first bloom. And by what I mean by bloom, I mean, hormonal bloom, right? Cognition is coming online in a very different way in a child at that age. And their feelings are really, 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 really big. And if no one is guiding them through those big feelings, they begin to internalize what those feelings mean. And often it's a gloom and doom kind of way, right? The world doesn't love me. There's no future. Um, my And if, if his feelings at all in anywhere were being downplayed. I'm not saying anything about his family. I send all of my love and care to the grief that they will now have to walk through. And we don't, it's cultural as well as familial, but I mean, the outlying system of this despair is cultural and societal. It's not, and then there's family, which is the greatest influence. But sometimes even if I always tell people, you're living in a home with your family members and there's one member there too. And it's called your culture and society. And if you're not an active relationship to that culture and that society, and let's say right now technology and social media and the internet is a part of that society and culture, if you're not an active relationship with it, understanding its effects, understanding how, how, what it's meant to do in a manipulative manner and not supporting your children through that, then they're at the whim of the internet and what's on the internet. And nothing on the internet says you matter. Nothing. There's nothing on social media, TikTok, things like that, that are telling kids you matter. And you matter not because you did something or you achieved something or you acted a certain way, but you matter because you matter. Period. And it's not coming from a cohesive family, cultural, societal place. Yes. And even then, the truth is, sometimes it won't be enough. That's so true. That is so true. Ah. Oh. Yes, you know, it 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 brings me it brings me to deep thought into not only social media but to every single area um that creates life, right? The from peers, um, family, um, that are, is supposedly far away, close by, uh, friendships, all, all that makes our culture. You know, I love a phrase that says, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And I don't think we both, uh, we have right now, personally, I don't think that there is a strong focus neither on culture and neither on strategy on how to support our youth or support our future generations to navigate these very uh, incongruent, non-cohesive, as you said, times that we're experiencing. It's, you know, it blows my mind that little kids from six, seven, eight, 12 years old are suiciding. It's, it's, it just shows me there's something off, you know, and, and there uh, is, and one of them is that they, um, from the very beginning of their lives, the whole purpose of parenting is to prepare them for a life without us. We will die, but prepare them to live a good life without us. And that means teaching them to trust themselves, teaching them to individuate in a healthy manner, in a way that they're supported and cared for as they individuate. And